This is a little video about our trip from Washington, D.C. to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania along the C&O Canal and the Great Allegheny Passage. It's a 325 mile ride on a bicycle and it was a great time. Of course, the first thing we had to do is get there and the traffic coming over Route 80, Interstate 80, was a little jammed up. This was a 10 mile back up as a result of a tractor trailer catching fire going up the hill. It must have been dragging its brakes or something. But eventually we got to Pittsburgh and um, we parked in the parking lot and loaded the bikes on a U-Haul uh, truck. And the U-Haul truck took the bikes and gear to uh, Washington and we rode in a couple of big cruiser um, buses that were very comfortable and they had lunches on it for some people I think you had to buy a lunch but it was a it wasn't a too bad of a ride I think it was two and a half hours from Pittsburgh to Washington DC but once we got to uh, Washington DC to Georgetown under a bridge we waited for the U-Haul trucks which took a different route than the bus for the equipment to come and once the equipment came we finally got all our bikes and everything together and we met some of the other riders and this was one of the riders, a little dog on the back, and uh, Molly rode all the way. Once we got on the canal, the uh, Washington section has a couple of places that are historically accurate, um, where they have people that um, dress up and run uh, canal lock just like in the old days. You could get in the boat and actually ride along with the people if you wanted to. That was pretty nice. And then the... Um, first campsite uh, the gear trucks would get there ahead of everybody and um, lay out all the gear for everybody and, and you'd pick up your stuff and um, hopefully um, set up your tent or you'd go to these guys who were we had uh, we had contracted with a group called comfy campers to build our tent for us and set up air mattresses and give us fresh towels that was with a whole other people in the group that all set up like that. The rest of the people had their own tents and gear and they would set up their tents in um, various places around the different camping areas. We always camped in a very large field. Uh, once everybody was set up, of course, dinner was served and that was all catered. And um, quite a few people would um, immediately hit dinner at um, five o'clock, I think was dinner every day till about seven. And that was pretty good food. Um, I was impressed. I, I don't think anybody lost any weight on the whole camping trip. I, on the other hand, wasn't as interested in food as I was interested in the shower truck. They had a large uh, commercial truck that had uh, 16 shower stall stalls with hot water and good water pressure and soap and shampoo and everything. And as far as I was concerned, the guy who owned this thing and ran it was the guy who made the whole trip absolutely wonderful. So each morning after a good breakfast we got up and packed up and um, got on our bikes. Um, quite a few days it was raining or pretty cool but it didn't really seem to matter. We didn't really care. We just went. Um, one of the things we did learn was that the reason canals aren't real popular today is because they were wiped out by the railroads and so every canal route has a uh, train track nearly right next to it so we saw a lot of trains and um, heard a lot of trains all day and night so that's something to think about when you go on uh, bike routes that have uh, on a canal you're gonna see trains a lot of a lot of good sights off the beaten path we left the canal went into uh, Harper's Ferry and um, some of the Civil War towns um, was just awesome sightseeing so while lunch was provided for a couple of the days, some of them you um, were supposed to go into town and get your own lunch. But after a hard day's ride, it was back to the um, shower truck and um, enjoy a nice uh, shower, hot shower, get changed into uh, street clothes for a day and meet with friends that we rode with. These are um, This is a couple that was 78 and 80 <laughs> that rode with us and they were quite, uh, quite a lot of fun, but uh, have dinner and uh, relaxed. Um, we usually got into camp around 
2 or 3 o'clock um, after doing 40 miles. Um, we usually got out of camp at 8 o'clock, 8.30 at the latest. But um, every camp was a little different, but kind of the same. They were all big fields. Um, one of the things I learned was all the camping was put in towns along the canal so that it showed to the local people that um, biking along the canal is worth supporting. And so we had um, we had some campgrounds that were well into cities, and this one was right next to a big coal mine that was um, running. And it wasn't too noisy, but uh, it wasn't quite as serene as the trail could have been. There's a lot of camping spots along the canal, like this one, this, this type of trail here. And because most of the canal trail looks like this, uh, one of the things I didn't realize was that um, we didn't have much worry about sunburn. We were in the shade almost all the time. I mean, this was in the um, <coughs> the middle of June down in Virginia and um, Pennsylvania, and we were um, we were pretty comfortable. A lot of pretty sights like this is um, the canal going over um, part of the Chesapeake River tributaries. The whole canal, the CNO Canal, follows the Chesapeake River all the way um, from Cumberland to Washington. So it's just beautiful scenery and trail along these cliffs and rocks. And it was all cut. Um, very few places um, are, is the canal actually still there, but in the places it is, um, it's kind of neat. Um, since it is right along the river though, there's a lot of places to stop and wade. Most of the river is only two or three feet deep because it's such a wide, shallow river, and it's fun to, you know, if you're hot, you just dive into it. Um, there were a lot of places where people were um, floating around in it from the biking. Um, I think one day we had a hot, sunny day that was in the um, upper 80s, and people just routinely stopped along the, the way. This is the canal, the old canal, um, on the other side of the path from the river. And um, there were a lot of turtles there, but they got away before I snapped the picture. And then one of the things about the canal is that they put tunnels. Um, they put the canal through tunnels. I never heard of that before. But this is what they call the Paw Paw Tunnel. And I guess from the stories I heard, this is one of the reasons that the um, canal kind of went broke. Um, they had expected to just tunnel through some soft mud, and what they ended up doing is finding a whole lot of rock. And, um, but this is the original, um, well, it may not be the original, but it's set up the way it was when they pulled boats through it. Um, so this is a tunnel. This is one of the things about this tunnel is it's a canal tunnel. So there are no lights in it. So it's required to have lights on your bike, um, so that you can see. And I had a, uh, an LED light that was a 150 lumens that, lit up the whole tunnel and everybody was so impressed and we all took a lot of pictures in this tunnel because of it but um, it's a long tunnel as you can see you can't see the other end it curves even and you need to have the light or it's pitch black in there coming out the other side it's uh it's pretty scary looking actually i mean it's uh but it's neat i don't know if uh people canoe through it or not it was all full of water and but one other thing I wanted to point out is that it was brick. It was all hand laid up brick. And I think there might have been a few repairs, but not many. Um, the brick were original to the, the to the original canal. This is coming out the other side of the canal. And again, there, there was water in the canal, the original canal. And there were a lot of opportunities to take pictures of turtles. Um, turtles everywhere. Um, and if you stayed long enough, um, not only would you see turtle basking on logs, you'd also see them crawling up um, sticks and logs. Um, and you'd see the birds um, crawl, uh, flying around, getting bugs, and dragonflies were everywhere. Dragonflies were good, kept the deer flies down. This is a uh, school that was turned into a diner um, that we stopped at for lunch, and they had all these antique cars inside and out. And it was pretty cool. We stayed there for about an hour resting. Um, and it was just like a regular school cafeteria and everything, but um, the Amish um, were making food there and we had sandwiches. And then we wandered around in the um, gymnasium and classrooms and looked at some uh, real nice old cars. 
uh, mostly 60s version classics cars. Um, some good old uh, Chryslers and Fords and Mustangs and stuff. And this is the end of the canal as it comes into um, Cumberland, Maryland, I believe. And um, that was just uh, down inside. You continued down the trail and you were inside the city of Cumberland. And we slept underneath the interstate in a great big field that had a bandstand and an old old train station which all turned into commercial property but it was pretty nice and then you went 50 miles uphill um, on the railroad um, trail which was pretty nice and there was an old um, train that went up it that took a lot of people I decided to ride it so I rode and um, everybody took the train so they were all ahead of me but I rode pretty fast <laughs> although it was all uphill and then at the top of the hill after I think it was 23 miles you came to what they call the Eastern Continental Divide and this was a big adventure here they made a big issue of this and, but it had some really pretty murals on it um, see there's the Eastern Continental Divide um, everything going east goes to the ocean and the west goes to the Mississippi but some beautiful murals um, talking about the um, age of um, canals and railroads and um, steam locomotives and everything. And it was pretty nice. I mean, it, it had some real historic value. And they were on both sides of the uh, archway that you went through. So you had to look at all sides. And then there was another mural inside the um, tunnel that was in there too so you had to look at it all well then um once you were over the continental divide um everything was downhill and it was pretty nice you got a nice quick ride and um you came to a couple of tunnels there were actually two tunnels um this tunnel um was i think the biggest one the, the great savage tunnel and you can look that up on the internet they've got a lot of information on it but it was um, quite long, but it was lit. You didn't need a light in there. Um, people went through it, and it was quite cold in the tunnel, and there was a lot of wind coming up through the tunnel. But um, they have all sorts of information about that along the um, inside the tunnel on either side. And um, I had my light, so I lit it up to take pictures, but really it was um, almost... Um, three quarters of a mile I think tunnel it, I mean you could not see the other end and it was a straight tunnel so all you could see is the lights um, vanishing into the distance and then to go with the tunnels there were quite a lot of aqueducts or uh, viaducts I guess for a train that um, seemed to go on forever this went from one hill to another it went over four roads and it went um, about a mile and um, it was incredible. Uh, if you were afraid of heights or bridges, you weren't going to get across this. I don't know what Caesar would do. But um, then there were a couple more going over some rivers. Um, this was actually on the way into a town that um, we went in for some beers one night. Um, this was um, Ohio Pile in Pennsylvania. It's uh, got the Ohio Pile River is pretty... Um, famous for kayaking and um, horseback riding and all sorts of things. This was um, a campsite we did that was in a church backyard. And when I first saw it, I thought, wow, how nice. Great manicured grass and um, beautiful area. And uh, our tent, our, our people set up our tent on a really nice flat area. But you see those trees in the back? <laughs> Those trees are hiding a train track. So it was a train going through there at 90 miles an hour in the middle of the night. Um, this is um, coming into a town that had was kind of a historic town. Um, and this was a mine that um, we stopped at. Um, it was a, a mine that, coal mine that had been there and uh, had just recently been shut down I guess like in the last 30 years and um, they had all the information about the mine and there was a whole bunch of 
stuff still for the mine um, set up, bridges and and um, conveyor setups and stuff like that. So it was pretty interesting. But the really bad thing was that when you look around, um, it, the mine had destroyed the landscape. I mean, it was just all old coal parts and pieces and crushed rock everywhere. And we rode around on it. It was fun to ride the bikes on because that's what our bikes were, is mountain bikes for that kind of grit. So we rode around and had a good time, and apparently other people did too. But um, it wasn't very pretty. But then there, this is this park that's a town that's set up kind of like Colonial Williamsburg. It's all old and everything. And this is the only campsite that we actually stayed at that was actually a campground. Um, it was almost to Pittsburgh, and it was really very nice. It was woods, and it was um, it was a lot of grassy spots. It was pretty soft and nice. We, I mean, we're on air mattress anyway, so we didn't care. But um, way down in the woods, there were lean-tos that you could use if you wanted to. But we had our um, comfy camper tents, so we stayed in that. And um, there was a river there that um, I'm not sure what river that was but it it flowed towards Pittsburgh and the actual rail trail stopped at this one town and so they gave us a big lunch where we could all get together and be in one big bunch and get a police escort through the town so we weren't uh, weren't clogging up the streets um, all day long so we had this big uh, parade and it was pretty nice they had give out awards and everything about people and talked about the trail and made a big speech and made it a big political rally and everything but this is about I think that was either either 8 or 12 miles to Pittsburgh and then we were done so this was the last day and beautiful day and um, this is the one mile mark uh, one mile left to go to the end of the ride and um, so that was a big event as far as I was concerned 324 miles over seven days and um, it was a lot of fun and I'm glad we did it. Um, it uh, we made some nice friends. Uh, I wish we had kept in touch with them because uh, they were they were an awful lot of fun. They'd been all over the world um, biking but um, it was an excellent trip. It, I would recommend it for anybody. Um, sign up and uh, go. Don't wait. It was a great trip. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up and please subscribe. I need all the subscribers I can get. Um, thank you for watching.